Royal Caribbean's Voyager of the Seas is the original Voyager class ship. And if you have a cruise coming up on Voyager, well, you might be wondering, what does the ship look like? What is there to do on board? And what is it like to walk around the ship? Well, today we've got a full walkthrough tour of Voyager of the Seas. So that way you know where everything is before you get on board up next. everyone, it's Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com. We're going to kick off our Voyager of the Seas tour with the pool deck on deck 11. The pool deck, of course, is at the top of the ship on the, one of the highest decks. Not the highest deck, we'll get there in a little bit. But this is a hub of activity, and odds are on a sea day or even on an embarkation day, you might head up here. Because the pools are open every day of your cruise, whether your ship is in port, whether it's embarkation day, whether you're at sea, they'll be available for you to use throughout the day. And as you can see here, there are a number of pools and hot tubs available to use. There's no cost to go over here. And at the main pool, which is where we're at right now, guests of all ages are allowed to go there. The pool deck has actually two decks, deck 11 and deck 12. You'll see the different seating configurations as we go through this video tour. But the main pool is actually split into two, and this actually allows it more space. That way, you don't have, instead of having one giant pool, you have two separate smaller pools, but it just helps break up the crowds a little bit. I'm not saying your pool won't be crowded. I'm just saying that it helps spread people out just a little bit more. Surrounding the pool deck, of course, is going to be plenty of lounge chairs. Lounge chairs are first come, first serve, and there's no cost to them. You just need to simply get out there, grab one for yourselves, and you're on your way. There are also hot tubs available on the pool deck. The hot tubs are available for guests of all ages. The nice thing about the hot tubs here is they are covered, so it provides at least some shade from the sun while you're in there. Now, speaking of the lounge chairs, you're going to find plenty of them all around the pool deck. You know, it's a really good idea to, of course, be courteous to your fellow guests and not hog up the chairs throughout the day. Only use them when you need to, but obviously some people don't do that, but you don't have to be part of the problem with that. There's also a nice movie screen right by the pool for you to look at. And if you're staying in a suite, you may notice this reserve seating that's located between deck 11 and deck 12. That's for suite guests only in a grand suite and above. There's also seating around the pool deck. And I actually like the seating that's in the shaded area that we're seeing here as we're walking by. Nice spot. Next up is the Sprinkles ice cream where you can go to get complimentary soft serve ice cream any time of day here on Voyager. And the free soft serve ice cream is definitely a staple of Royal Caribbean cruise ships. You can find this on every single ship. And here on Voyager of the Seas, it is located conveniently right by the pools. So that way you don't have to go very far to grab one or when you're on your way going from point A to point B, you'll have that ice cream there. The pool bar is located also on deck 11 of the pool area. And the aptly named bar is where you can go to grab a drink. There is bar service that goes around the pool as well, but if you just want to go here and grab a drink, it's first come first serve. On deck 12, you have the Sky Lounge, and the Sky Lounge is where you can go to also get a drink. The main difference is just the location. Same drink, same drink menu, but you have different options. I prefer the Sky Lounge personally because there's a little more of a breeze, a little less busy than the main pool bar, and I love the views from up here on deck 12 as well. Not only can you see out to the pool and see what's going on there, but you can also look out to the ocean as well. It's great for people watching, and I just like this vantage point quite a bit. Now, sometimes Royal Caribbean will set up bar stations around the pool deck as well to help take some of the demand off of the bars themselves. There's also a towel station you can go to, to, of course, rent towels. No cost for towels. There's no need to pack towels to bring from home to your cruise ship. They'll have them available for you, and you get as many towels as you need. Just make sure you return them before the end of the cruise, because otherwise Royal Caribbean will assess a fee with that. But just go up there. Grab a towel, you can always exchange them at any time. No problem, very easy. You just scan your C-Pass card and you're good to go. There are also swim vests available to rent on Voyager. So if your kid or adult needs to use a swim vest, they're available for free, no cost. Just simply grab one and bring it back when you're done. It's a nice option for those that are not very strong swimmers. Tide and Trail is a place you can go to to pick up some extra equipment for either your time in the pool or perhaps on shore in one of the excursions you're doing. A lot of aquatic equipment you can purchase if you see fit for that. Jogging track is on deck 12. So if you're looking to walk or jog or run during your cruise, it's gonna be on deck 12 of Voyager to the Seas. Now, as you can see, there are definitely some people who are walking on the track in order to get from point A to point B. So if you're going for a jog or a run, my advice is go in the early morning when there's less people to contend with. If you wanna go for like a noon run, that's cool, but you're gonna be dodging people left and right. As you can see from deck 12, there's a lot of seating up here. There's not a lot of shade, but plenty of seating. And if you're looking for less contested seats, this is definitely the place to go. There's tons of seating, including seats up here on like deck 13, I guess we're gonna call it. 
but you'll find no shortage of seats all around deck 12. So you just need to go a little further from the pool to find them, but they are available here. And honestly, these chairs that you're seeing are rarely, if ever used. In fact, this space is just not used at all on Voyager of the Seas, on Mariner of the Seas and Navigator. This is where the mini golf is, but for whatever reason on Voyager, they haven't used it, which is a shame because it's just wasted space. But the nice thing about deck 12 is also the great place to go for viewing what's happening around you, especially on For Sale Away. It's one of my favorite places to go is up here on Deck 12, make a note of that. All right, let's head over to the Solarium. The Solarium is the adults only area on Deck 11. The Solarium is for guests 18 and above only, so kids under that age are not allowed in here. They can walk through, but they're not here to you know hang out. There is a pool in the Solarium for adults. You'll notice the padded loungers as well. There's the Solarium bar. And really, this is an enclave for adults to enjoy. Now, Royal Caribbean did change in 2023, the minimum age from 16 to 18. So before you comment that I'm wrong on the age, it did change in 2023. Now, the Solarium is, you know, just like the pool deck, it's just basically just for adults only. And the Solarium here on Voyager is not enclosed, it is open air. On some other Royal Caribbean cruise ships, the Solarium is enclosed by glass, that's not the case here. There are also two hot tubs in the Solarium area, and these are rather large spaces for guests to go in here and enjoy some time in the hot tub. Again, they're in the shade, which is nice. And also if it's raining, it's actually a space to go to because it's covered in case of rain. I think what a lot of people love about the Solarium is that it's quieter. There's no live music to have playing in the background. And of course there is a Solarium bar, just like the pool bar, it's the same basic concept over here. And you will find people walking around from occasionally take drink orders as well, but you can go right up to the bar and order a drink. We're now gonna head out to the front of the ship. And this used to be a little area that you get out to the front, like to the bow, that's been replaced in a recent amplification. So instead, it's just a neat little area to go to to get some nice views and most people don't know about it. So if you want a little quaint area for sail away, this might not be a bad spot for it. It's right outside the solarium on both sides of the ship. All right, we're gonna head over to deck 13 and the sports court. So this is the back now of Voyager of the Seas and the sports deck is where you can find a variety of activities that you can enjoy throughout your cruise. You know, Royal Caribbean cruises are known for these activities. And quite frankly, Voyager of the Seas introduced so many of these, including the basketball court that you see over here, the rock wall we'll see in a little bit, and of course, Flow Rider and other amenities that you're well known for. The sports court is where you can go to enjoy a variety of activities that are performed over here, basketball, soccer, volleyball, dodgeball, pickleball. They're all done on this court and it can change throughout the day. The aforementioned rock climbing wall is also over here. You can try your luck, I guess, skills to get up the rock wall and see if you can get all the way to the top. There's no cost to do it. All equipment is provided for you. You just need to bring socks with you and give it a try. And there's different trails in order to get from how difficult you want the course to be, which is a really nice add on and something fun to do while you're on board your cruise. Over here, we also have the mini golf known as the Voyager Dunes and the mini golf is complimentary. No cost to enjoy that. Just grab a ball, grab a club, and you're on your way to try your luck at the holes that are over here. Mini golf is a great family activity. I mean, all of these things are really great fun activities that we're seeing here on the sports deck. But what's nice about the mini golf is that it's very low impact, easy to get into, and you can, you know, play a hole or two or do all of them. It's up to you. There's also a flow rider surf simulator on Voyager this season. The flow rider is a system with high speed water that simulates what an ocean wave would be. And you can either do sand up surfing or you can do boogie boarding it's up to you in terms of you know what you feel comfortable with and also what you could possibly master so to speak they won't let you do just about anything but you got to work your way up for that and the nice thing about the flow rider is that it is complimentary it's first come first serve so of course the lines can develop for it it is a popular activity but it is free there are lessons you can do some of those lessons do cost extra you can look into your cruise planner for more information about that voyager also has two water slides on there, the Perfect Storm water slides are available on Voyager. No cost for the water slides, but you just gotta wait in line for it. My advice for both the Flow Rider and the water slides, the best time to do it is on embarkation day. Bring your bathing suit with you, change once you get on board the ship in one of the public restrooms, and then hit up the slides or the Flow Rider or both, because you're not gonna have a lot of competition for it on embarkation day. Occasionally you also find some beanbag toss here as well on the sports deck. And if you go right below the floor rider, I'm not sure which deck this is. I guess we're on 12 technically again. I'm not sure, but you'll find some great seating here in the back and views from the back of the ship. So check it out if you're looking for a great and quiet sail away spot. Challenger's Arcade is on deck 12 in the back of the ship. And Challenger's Arcade is of course the arcade. The arcade costs extra. So before you think you're gonna do them all, well, you're gonna have to pay to do them all. You'll find video games of all kinds, whether it is air hockey 
or skee ball or basketball or straight up video games, racing games. There's a variety of things and plenty of claw machines as well. In terms of the arcade games, you can pre-purchase credits before the cruise. I actually don't recommend them. You just find that I can never actually spend them all because of the various denominations you need for the arcade machine. So your best bet, honestly, is to just scan your CPAS card as you need it when you want to play the games. And all you have to do is just simply go over there, find the game that you want to do, or drag your kids out of there when you're done. Adventure Ocean is conveniently located right near the arcade area. Adventure Ocean is the complimentary kids programming on Voyager of the Seas. So there's kids programming from between the ages of three years old, all the way up to 17, that extends into the teen club. Here in Adventure Ocean, we're talking about Aquanauts, Explorers, and Voyagers. Aquanauts is three to five, six to eight is Explorers, and Voyagers is nine to 12. And this area is meant for kids to go to and have a great time because hanging out with parents is boring. They just stand around and talk about Dave Matthews and baseball. Instead, you wanna go here as a kid and have fun. There's also a nursery on board for infants that are between the ages of six and 36 months old. The nursery does cost extra, Adventure Ocean does not. There's also Back Deck, which is the name of the teens area on Voyager of the Seas. And for teens, this is meant as their enclave, similar to the Solarium, although there's no pool here. This is a spot just for teens to hang out. And you can see there's a lot of comfy seating and places for them to just be with themselves and talk and hang out. And there are activities in the teen club in the evening, but a lot of teens just kind of come and go as they see fit. Well, we're 12 minutes into this video. And I'm getting hungry, so let's check out the Windjammer Marketplace. This is the buffet on Voyager, and the Windjammer is open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. As you walk in, you'll need to wash your hands, not only for everyone's benefit, but your own benefit. And there are hand washing stations for you to do that. And then once you get into the Windjammer, you'll find buffet stations all around. There's no cost to use the Windjammer. It's available throughout most of the day, as I mentioned, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It does shut down between each of those meals. There's a little bit of a downtime there for the crew to relax and of course set up the next area. But you're gonna find the Windjammer bar as you first walk in to the Windjammer and then the stations behind that. By far, the Windjammer is most popular for breakfast around 9 a.m. in the morning and around dinner time around six or seven o'clock. When it comes to the meals here, you're gonna find a good variety of food. You know, you're gonna find familiar favorites, you're gonna find exotic international foods and lots of things in between. If you're a picky eater or you're cruising with a picky eater or you have someone in your party named Camille, this is the place to go because you're gonna find the greatest variety of food to enjoy. When it comes to the Windjammer, I like to walk around, try to find what's interesting, what they got, because some of the stations do change. For breakfast, it's pretty much the same every day, but for lunch and dinner, you will find rotations of the food stations here. Now, some of the things don't change. There's always be like burgers and hot dogs and chicken fingers, but you may find different soups. You may find different plated foods. Anyway, all of this is available here. And then of course, there's seating all around the Windjammer for you to go to. In terms of getting a seat, you know, your best bet is to walk around, see what you can find. With a little patience, you can certainly find something. Also, keep an eye out for like the cooking stations. There's an omelet station in the morning, pasta stations in the afternoon and evening, and other special cuisines in which you go there and you tell them what you want them to make and they make it for you. It's really good. And because it's freshly made, it really stands out. One great benefit of the Windjammer, quite frankly, is just this variety of food. There's so much. And what I like about Royal Caribbean is that you're gonna find a good variety, especially international foods. If you're a fan of Indian curries, my goodness, you're gonna find a great variety of those here on Royal Caribbean's cruise ships here like Voyager of the Seas. There's also a beverage station where you can get ice water, coffee, tea, hot water, and some flavored waters as well. Juices and sodas, and of course, alcohol do cost extra. If you have a drink package, you can get some over here. You also find waiters that walk around that not only help bust the tables, but also give you a drink order if you'd like one. And they're there to make your life a little bit easier. Sometimes if you just can't find a seat, maybe ask one of the waiters, they may be able to help you over here. The great thing about the back of the Windjammer are some of the views out here because it's located at the very back of the deck and there's windows and wonderful views. I really like going to the Windjammer for dinner because of the views out the window it really makes a difference. Located right next to the Windjammer is Chops Grill. Chops is the signature steakhouse on Royal Caribbean. And it's basically a steakhouse that serves up, well, a lot of cuts of steak. They do have other foods as well, including chicken and salmon and lobster. But I think if you're going to Chops, you're going there for the steak probably. And it's a specialty restaurant, which means there's a cover charge designer. You pay one fee and then the food is included as part of your cost to go here. 
Shops Grill can be reserved before the cruise via the Royal Caribbean website or the Royal Caribbean app. If you purchase it outright, like you booked, you know, this time on this day at Shops Grill, they'll charge you the full price. There are dining packages as well that you can purchase that can help take the sting out of the price because you're paying for multiple restaurants at once. But you're gonna find a good selection of food in Shops Grill. Lots of variety of choices here. Certainly enough for most people who are looking for a, well, you know, a nice steak or maybe a chicken or a lobster as well. You'll find that Shops Grill is open for lunch on sea days. It might also be open for lunch on embarkation day. You have to check the cruise compass and hours within the app for specifics on your sailing. You'll also find Cupcake Cupboard on Deck 11 app. The Cupcake Cupboard serves two purposes. First of all, you can actually purchase cupcakes, but they also do cupcake decorating classes in which you can go in here and actually learn to decorate your own cakes. But you can optionally just buy them if you'd prefer. There is a cost for both the classes and for actually the cupcakes if you want to purchase them outright. But it can be a fun activity, a great parent-child activity, or a great I live in Reno, but still want to decorate cupcakes activity. Regardless of that, it's available for you. You can pre-purchase the cupcake classes on the Royal Caribbean website in the cruise planner, but of course, to actually purchase the cupcakes themselves, you just simply stop by and grab them as you'd like. Now, of course, after all those cupcakes, you probably want to go to the gym, and that's where the Vitality Spa and Fitness Center is on deck 12 in the back of the ship. So the Vitality Fitness Center and Spa is where you can go for both places. Let's take a look at the spa first. The spa, of course, costs extra. There is a salon and there are services provided that you can go here to. You can pre-book the salon or the massage services before the cruise or once on board the ship. In fact, you can tour both of them for free on board the ship. Go there on embarkation day and ask for a tour. It's a great way to see what's available for you. And if you'd like, book an appointment. The prices for the spa and salon aren't cheap, but they're also not like super expensive either. I think they're about reasonable for what you'd get at a resort for similar services. In the salon, you get your hair done, your nails done. For guys, you can get a shave and get a haircut as well. And they do manicures and pedicures and all those kinds of things in the salon. They do book up quite quickly because it's a very small space. In terms of the massages available in the spa itself for the treatments, there's a variety of treatments available. Sweetest massages and there's hot stones and bamboo massages and acupuncture and a variety of other options that are available for you. Also ask while you're in the spa about daily specials. Usually there is a special of the day and it has some sort of a discount or combo deal. If you're interested in maybe taking advantage of one of those offers. Of course, the spa is all about relaxation on a cruise. Every Royal Caribbean cruise ship has a Vitality Spa and it offers guest services, seminars, and treatments that are aimed at making you feel better, look better, and be healthier. Let's move on to the fitness center. And this is where you can go to enjoy the gym on board. The fitness center on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship offers a great variety of machines. It's not like a hotel that has like a corner with a couple of free weights. You're gonna find free weights, of course, but you're also gonna find exercise machines and treadmills and ellipticals and all sorts of things that you can use. And there's no cost to use the fitness center outside of the fitness classes. So when you wanna come here and use the fitness center, it's available for you. By far, it gets very busy in the morning, especially early on in the cruise. As the cruise goes on, I think demand for it kind of wanes. People start to figure, you know what? I'd rather sleep in. There are fitness classes as well you can get to, like spin class and Pilates. And then of course, there's towels that you can use and lockers available as well. There are also changing rooms available within the fitness center. And these are available for you to use before you go into the gym, obviously. And there are showers and lockers for you to use. Uh, and in fact, the showers that you see here are a great little tip because they're available whether you're using the gym or not. Most people don't actually know they exist or use them. And it's actually very large, so a good option for you. Next up is the Viking Crown Lounge on deck 14 midship. The Viking Crown Lounge is the highest point in the cruise ship that you can really get to, and it's only available via the midship elevators. The forward elevators don't go here. The great thing about the Viking Crown Lounge, of course, are the amazing views. There's a bar over here, a lounge area. They also offer some events like dancing and some late night partying up here. But I think what a lot of people enjoy is going up here to see the views and have a drink or just enjoy the vantage point that you have here on deck 14 overlooks not only the pool deck, but the top deck of the ship. And of course, what's around you. It's a great spot, especially when the weather is not cooperating. Maybe it's too hot out. Maybe it's rainy or both. The Viking Crown Lounge is always the right weather for you to go to. And the nice thing about the bar service here is that they serve all the great drinks that you enjoy. And as I mentioned earlier, there are also special events held up here like Silent Disco, in which they give you the headphones and you get to select which music you want to listen to. But the music's only heard in your headset it's not heard outside, hence why it's a silent disco, because you can't hear anything 
unless you have headphones on. This is a really fun event, and a lot of people like going here because it's just a nice way to, you know, switch between tunes and dance with friends and family. You'll also find the Sweet Lounge on deck 14 opposite the Viking Crown Lounge, and the Sweet Lounge is a reserved area just for sweet guests. This area is available for sweet guests who are going uh, to be able to look for a little enclave for themselves. There's complimentary hors d'oeuvres and appetizers throughout the day. There's a coffee machine they can use. And at night, they provide free complimentary drinks as well. It's a really nice space. It's meant to be kind of this quiet space for you to go to and hang out, enjoy some of the complimentary food and drinks that are available here. And it's one of the best benefits of staying in a suite is that you have access to this particular spot. Not only is it lucrative because you have access to all the free drinks and alcohol, as I mentioned earlier, but also you have access to the concierge services themselves. The Sweet Concierge is there to help you with any problems you may have from billing to booking reservations, anything else in between. Izumi is another location of a specialty restaurant on deck 14 near the Sweet Lounge and Viking Crown Lounge. Izumi is the Japanese specialty restaurant. When you go to Izumi, you primarily go here to get, of course, sushi, but it is priced a la carte, which means unlike chops where you pay a cover charge, here you pay for each item individually. Now, Chops does offer a fixed price menu, and that gives you a set amount of food at a specific price. I'm not a huge fan of it because you get less food for it. My advice is to go to Izumi and order a la carte and pay for those items individually. There is also a chapel on deck 15 of Voyager this season. It is one of the last chapels that's left on a Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Royal Caribbean has been slowly phasing them out because they're just not necessary or popular, quite frankly. And on other ships, this space has been replaced by an escape room, but on Voyager Disease, it is still here. I don't think you'll have any reason to go up here, but if you did, it exists. Its most popular use, honestly, is if you're booking a wedding on Voyager, well, then that's where the ceremony can take place. Let's go to the main dining room. The main dining room is three decks, decks three, four, and five in the back of the ship. And the main dining room is available for breakfast and dinner every night of the cruise and for lunch on sea days only. And the main dining room is just a beautiful, an elegant space for you to go to. There is a dress code for the main dining room. For dinner, it'll change throughout the cruise every night. For breakfast and lunch, it's more of a, just a casual dress code here. But really what this is about is plated serviced meals. When you book your cruise, you'll have the option of either traditional dining or my time dining. There's pros and cons to both. With traditional, you have the same table, same wait staff, and same time every night of the cruise. My time gives you more flexibility, but you may have a different table table mates, or even wait staff, or all three, quite frankly. The main dining room is really one of the staples of a Royal Caribbean cruise. Every night in dinner, the menu changes. For breakfast, it stays the same every day. But for lunch and dinner, it does rotate, and dinner has a really nice rotation there where you get different choices and different options. Nearly everything in the menu is included. For dinner, there are some premium selections, which include lobster and steak. Those cost extra, but everything else on the menu is included, and you can and should order more than one item. Whether you order, you know, two appetizers or hypothetically seven appetizers if your name happens to be Patty, it doesn't really matter because you're still able to take advantage of what's available here. And, you know, maybe you wanna try something new. Maybe you wanna double dip into one of your favorite foods. That is an option for you when you're dining in the main dining room. What I love about it, of course, is the pomp and circumstance that comes with it. Having, I like doing traditional dining, having the same waiters every night. They get to know your preferences. It's all about the service here. I'm a big fan of the main dining room, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with eating main dining compared to the specialty restaurants. I like to sprinkle in and augment specialty dining with the main dining room. So definitely plan if you're new to cruising to eat in the main dining room because it is a great spot and the food changes every day of the cruise, although some things do carry over from night to night. But you know what? I really like the variety. I think there's some really good choices there. And considering that's included in your cruise fare, it's a great option for you to try out. A couple other good tips to keep in mind for the main dining room is you can always preview the menu in the Royal Caribbean app. It's also posted outside the dining room itself if you wanna take a look at it later, but you can always look at it, see if it's a good choice for you on the menu, or perhaps you wanna to go to the Windjammer or especially restaurant instead. Now let's go to the Royal Promenade on deck five, and the Royal Promenade is the main thoroughfare. There is shopping, there is drinks, there's dining, there's entertainment. There's a lot to do here, and I think you're gonna find yourself walking through the promenade more often than not. It really is a major artery for Voyager of the Seas. And the Voyager class ships, of which Voyager was the first, introduced this concept, which has been copied on many other Royal Caribbean cruise ships first. But at the time when it debuted, it was a really big deal. We're starting off with the R-Bar, and this is a bar that, well, at one time it was really all about like 
custom alchemy type drinks. Like, you know, they had a menu, but they would make something cool for you. I think that vibe or that idea has kind of gone to the wayside. It's just a, another bar, quite frankly. They do have their own set of drinks here that you can enjoy. But the R bar is a great place, great location as well, because it's right on the Royal Promenade and very conveniently located to a lot of different areas. So a lot of people go here to kind of meet up. Next, you have guest services. Guest services is where you go if you have any issues on board your cruise, whether you're locked out of your room, a billing question, any issue at all, guest services is available 24 hours a day to help you. Lines for guest services can develop throughout the cruise, especially busy on the first and last days of the cruise. There's also the shore excursion desk, which is where you can get answers to shore excursion questions you may have, as well as book tours themselves. Port Merchants is one of the shops on Voyager of the Seas, and Port Merchants is where you can go to buy duty-free liquor and tobacco products. When you purchase these items, they'll store them for you and they deliver to you on the last night of the cruise. Whether or not it's a good deal in here, up to you. And for a lot of people, I think maybe you'll find better deals on land, but it's worth checking out and it is duty-free, which is one advantage of buying liquor over here. The Regalia Fine Jewelry Store is our next stop on our tour, and this is where you can get, well, of course, fine jewelry, earrings and bracelets and necklaces and everything else in between you can purchase there. There's also a Swarovski store to buy that, of course, branded jewelry on board Voyager of the Seas. And with all the jewelry, you know, pricing, my advice to you is take a look at it, but don't be afraid to at least pull up your phone and check it online to see how much these prices go for. I'm not saying they're bad deals, but sometimes the prices may not be quite as low as they may lead you to believe. But with any jewelry you're buying, you know, of course, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if there's something that you like at a price that you're comfortable with, it's certainly nothing wrong with purchasing on board the ship. The Royal Shop is our next stop. And this is where you can get primarily Royal Caribbean themed merchandise. For a lot of people, it's important to come home with a Royal Caribbean or Voyager of the Seas themed item, whether it is a sweater, a t-shirt, a coffee cup, a mug, a bracelet, a Christmas ornament, something with the words Voyager of the Seas or Royal Caribbean on there to commemorate your cruise. They also sell other items that might be of interest to you or useful, like these lanyards, which you can purchase to put your sea pass card on if you'd so choose. There's also water bottles, ship models, and a variety of other Royal Caribbean branded tchotchkes and novelty souvenirs. Whether it's for you or somebody that didn't go on the cruise, you want to bring them home a gift, you can purchase them over here. One tip about the Royal Caribbean merchandise is if you're in Crown and Anchor Society, ask if there's any discounts for your status in Crown and Anchor, gold, platinum, diamond. There sometimes is a discount on Royal Caribbean branded merchandise. Next, we have a stop at Solero, which is a makeup and perfume store. Whether you forgot it or need more of it or just wanna buy something different, you can shop this store over here. Again, pricing may vary, but they have a pretty decent selection considering you're on a cruise ship. And again, if you're in need of something or just wanna expand your collection, you can go to the Solera store to check out those items. The Regalia store is our next stop, and this is where you can get more jewelry, specifically watches over here. If you're noticing a lot of the Asian characters on the signs, by the way, that's because Voyager of the Sea spent a lot of time in the Asian cruise market. And of course, all the Royal Caribbean cruise ships move around the world, so it's not unexpected for that to occur. But at the time, Royal Caribbean had the ship over there, and so they designed some of those signs there. That's why you're seeing some of those characters on some of these signs throughout this tour. There's also on the Royal Promenade a pass-through down to the casino. This is a little shortcut. The Pig and Whistle is the English-style pub on Voyager of the Seas. This is where you can go to, of course, enjoy a tall stout beer of your choice, and of course, other cocktails as well. And really the appeal of the pub, in my opinion, is the nightly entertainment here. Usually there's a guitarist performing. I really enjoy going to the pub here, perhaps playing Jenga with somebody who's wearing a Penn State hat, and otherwise just enjoying some time with friends, right? Enjoying music, bars music specifically, you know, the kind of songs that you maybe remember from bars in college, your songs you can sing along to. It's a great atmosphere here. And of course they have a lot of drinks you can choose from at the pub. They have a menu, but also other drinks you can choose from. So you can start with the menu as a starting point, but of course they can always make you other items as well. Whether you wanna go with an old fashioned or you wanna go with rum and Coke or something else in between, they can make it for you here at the pub. Outside the pub, there is more seating. The seating outside the pub doesn't really hear the music that well, but for a lot of people, number one, they just want somewhere to sit. Number two, they don't mind sitting outside the pub. It's a little quieter in terms of when there's a guitarist in there, but also it's good for people watching. Fashion District is yet another shop available on the Royal Promenade. And the Fashion District is where you can pick up some designer clothing. So the other store had like Royal Caribbean themed clothing. Here, this is more about brand name 
clothing and jewelry and accessories that you can pick up. You can see here some sunglasses and they have plenty of shirts and shorts and dresses and things of that nature. Over at the shop, we've also got a coach store. So if you're looking to get name brand coach bags, you can actually purchase them here on Voyager of the Seas. You know, depending on which Royal Caribbean cruise ship you're on, the arrangement or selection, I should say, of stores can vary. And here on Voyager, this is we have actually a coach licensed store where you can purchase luxury handbags as well as other handbags as well. A spade, as you can see, and other name brands that I pretend to know about. And of course, throughout your cruise on the Royal Promenade, you'll also find different sales and items for sale in the middle of the promenade. There can be flash sales, there can be special discounts, or quite simply, them just moving around merchandise that you might not otherwise see if you weren't in the side of the store. So look for deals and different offers throughout your cruise. Again, they'll probably be there primarily in the evening, but there's usually things going on. You'll also find live music on the promenade. Quite often they'll have bands and performers who go out there and perform live music. This is something I absolutely love about Royal Caribbean is the live music component. Whether it's in the pub or here on the promenade or in the other venues we're gonna see on board the ship, there's a lot of live music and Royal Caribbean places a great deal of emphasis on their live music, it's a big deal for it. Cafe Promenade is a very popular stop on the Royal Promenade and anywhere on, of course, Voyager of the Seas. You can also, first of all, get Ben and Jerry's ice cream here along with coffees and snacks, and we'll see all of that. Ben and Jerry's does cost extra, so this ice cream is gonna be in addition to the cruise cost that you already paid, but if you're in the mood for Ben and Jerry's ice cream or maybe flavors of ice cream they don't have otherwise on the ship, you can go over here. I think most people go to Cafe Promenade for the coffee, there is a selection of complimentary coffee, free coffee, as well as coffee that costs extra. Now, the coffee that costs extra at Cafe Promenade is actually Starbucks drinks. You can get your macchiatos and lattes. They do cost extra if you have a drink package. It's actually included here on Cafe Promenade on Voyager of the Seas, which is really neat. And that applies to the Royal Refreshment Package and the Deluxe Beverage Package. More information about both drink packages over at royalcaribbeanblog.com. And of course, if you have a soda package, you can also get your sodas refilled here. Of course, you can also get your sodas refilled at any bar. If you have the refreshing package or the deluxe beverage package, it works here as well. You can also either purchase some of these other soft drinks here or uh, use your drink package benefits, and those are included as well. But in addition to all that, they also have some snacks and food you can peruse from, and of course, plenty of seating and the complimentary coffee on board. For a lot of people, they just simply stop by, get the free cup of coffee, and you know what? The free coffee is really not bad at all. I like it quite a bit. So you can stop by, get a cup of coffee, and be on your way. As I mentioned, there are snacks you can peruse. These snacks are complimentary. The selection usually changes every day, and you'll find different sandwiches you can choose from. And then, of course, there is the Sorrento's Pizza. Royal Caribbean's, I'm going to say, famous pizza that they offer. No cost for Sorrento's Pizza. Get as much as you like. Just come on back and get some more. It's amazing how good this pizza smells. And as the cruise goes on, I think you'll be eating more and more slices. You may have to contend with somebody named Earl for that pizza, but there's plenty of it to go around not to worry. And the nice thing about Sorrento's Pizza is that it stays open very late. This is true of all Cafe Promenade, but you can usually get it very late, like, you know, 2 a.m. or something like that. They stay up quite late, as you can see here in the hours. On this particular cruise, they were open until 3 a.m., which means for late night bites, this is the place to go. I also like that on Voyager of the Seas, they have this British motif here with this telephone booth, something that you don't see on any other Royal Caribbean cruise ship. This is also where the ship's ATM is located. My advice in terms of ATM is bring your own cash because the fees are quite high. There's also a classic car on the promenade. This is a staple of all Royal Caribbean promenades. And you've got one over here, it's good for photo ops. And really Cafe Promenade is about, of course, getting coffee, a little snack and being on your way. Next up, we're gonna head to the Star Lounge, one of the other multi-purpose venues on board. Before we get there though, we need to make a quick pit stop at the Diamond Lounge. The Diamond Lounge, Diamond Club here, is where you can go if you are a Diamond, Diamond Plus, or Pinnacle Club member on Royal Caribbean. Royal Caribbean has allocated this space specifically for Diamond members, and it's a place you can go to hang out and enjoy the venue. During the daytime, it's pretty much empty. There is, of course, the Diamond Concierge there who can help you with any particular issues you may have. But in the evening hours, I think this place really comes alive because they have drink service here and hors d'oeuvres offered as well. Something else you should know about the Diamond Lounge is in the morning, actually they're all day long, but I think it's most important in the morning, is the complimentary espresso machine that you can go to to get coffees throughout the day. That's self-service and available throughout the cruise. But there will be hors d'oeuvres and snacks served uh, during your sailing, so you can get those here at the Diamond Lounge. It's kind of like a sweet lounge, but for Diamond guests, if that makes sense and it's available for Diamond, Diamond Plus, and Pinnacle. So once you reach that status, 
you can go here and enjoy your access anytime you'd like. So it's a nice reserved area. And of course, Royal Caribbean wants to make sure they recognize their top members with that. The Star Lounge is our next stop, and this is a multi-purpose venue. The Star Lounge is used throughout your cruise for different activities, trivia, game shows, karaoke, live music. It, they just use it for a lot of different purposes. So you may see a lot of different activities being held over here. It's a very popular area, and it's great for really that kind of entertainment. You know, I mentioned earlier, Royal Caribbean places a lot of emphasis on music, of course, but they also do a lot of other activities here, whether it is karaoke or bingo or what have you. You're going to find the Star Lounge a very popular and frequently used venue on the Voyager of the Seas. There is a bar in the Star Lounge as well, and they'll have drink service when there's an event going on here. So if you're going for bingo or karaoke or trivia or what have you, you can expect to have drink service offered as well. And of course, just like other bars, if you have a drink package, then it works here at this bar as well. In terms of drinks to try, some of my favorites are definitely the Lava Flow with Kraken. The Royal Margarita is fantastic as well. The Espresso Martini is a great choice, especially if you need to pick me up. Caribbean Mule is really good. Lavender Daiquiri, you get the idea. All right, so there's a look at the Royal Promenade. Again, during the cruise, you're also gonna have different activities held out here, like dance parties. There's 70s dance parties and 80s dance parties and other dance parties that are held out here. So check your Royal Caribbean app or the Cruise Compass for the list of activities that are out here. It's a big party when you're on the Royal Promenade. And the nice thing about it, again, is that it really does transform throughout the day and evening. Next up, we need to go to the next cruise office on deck six. Next Cruise is where you can go to book another Royal Caribbean cruise. So why would you wanna to go to Next Cruise? Well, essentially, by booking your cruise at Next Cruise, Royal Caribbean will give you extra onboard credit and reduced deposit for booking on board. The price is the same, whether you book it at Next Cruise or at home. The difference is you get extra onboard credit and of course reduced deposit. So should you wait to go on Voyager of the Seas and then book your next cruise? My advice is no. Actually, if you're sitting at home watching this, you wanna book a cruise, I would book a cruise now because prices only go up over time. But if you're on Voyager of the Seas and you're having a great time, then you go to next cruise and book one. There's also a library on deck seven midship. So the library is a library really in the academic sense of the word. There are books you can borrow and read it's really a quiet area to go and kind of hang out and read or perhaps do a game or chat with friends. It's again, they are, there are books you can borrow. There is a wide variety of random books. I'm not even sure how these got here, whether or not Royal Caribbean ever like provided all these or people just left them behind. Regardless of that fact, you are more than welcome to grab a book, read it, take it out, come back, heck, bring your own book there. There are computers you can use for the internet access. My advice to you is use your own devices. These computers that Royal Caribbean provides are pretty janky. So if you got an iPhone with you, it's gonna perform a lot better. But if you need to use it in a pinch, there are computers. Of course, you need to use the internet access, which you need a Royal Caribbean internet package to use, but it is available for you. All right, we've kind of covered deck five and some of the stuff around it. We're gonna go down to deck four. And you see here we're in the Centrum area to get down there. There are multiple ways to get between the decks, of course, and this is a beautiful area going between the Royal Promenade and Deck 4. And Deck 4 is kind of an extension of the Royal Promenade. There's a lot happening here, starting with the Tavern. This is a venue that is not available on many, if any, other Royal Caribbean cruise ships. The Tavern is, well, it's a bar, usually on other Voyager class ships. This is where Boleros is located. But here, the Tavern has kind of a sports bar vibe, I'm gonna say, rather than a Latin theme. You know, this is kind of like a proto Playmakers, Playmakers being the sports bar available on other Royal Caribbean cruise ships. But for whatever reason, Royal Caribbean decided to go with this particular concept called the Tavern. And you can go here and have drinks. There's lots of TVs. That's really what makes this place different is that there's a lot of televisions so you can watch sporting events. Now, of course, which events are able to watch on board your ship will vary depending on the satellite coverage. Remember, when you're in international waters, satellite coverage of sporting events is different than what it is in the States. The art gallery is also located deck four midship. So Royal Caribbean has art auctions on board. And if you want to preview the art, you can go there. There's also Casino Royale, which is in the middle of deck four. Casino Royale is where you can go to, well, of course, gamble. There are slot machines and poker tables and blackjack tables and craps and a variety of other ways to try your luck at the casino. They are available for you to try there. The casino is operational as long as the ship is in international waters. So when you're in port, it's not open, but when you're out to sea, definitely there and whether or not you win money or not, that's up to you. But if you fancy a try at it, the casino is available. The casino is also one of the smoking venues on board, 
which unfortunately means a lot of people use it as a smoking venue more so than a gambling area. But if you'd like to give it a try, you can certainly gamble. And you know, whether you pay 10 bucks or you go all out and hopefully win a lot of money, I wish you the best of luck. And if you do win thousands and thousands of dollars, just remember which YouTube channel provided you all this helpful information. And next up is the Schooner Bar. Schooner Bar is a staple of any Royal Caribbean cruise ship. Schooner Bar is a nautical themed bar. It's also where you're gonna find piano. We'll get to that in a little later. But during the daytime, Schooner Bar is a popular place to kind of hang out. There's also trivia throughout the day. Uh, they actually revamped the Schooner Bar menu in 2023, and it's really good. I love toasted marshmallow old fashioned, really good. But for a lot of people, when they go to the Schooner Bar, they think of the piano player that is here because in the evenings, similar to how the pub has, of course, the guitarist, you're also gonna find here in the Schooner Bar, a piano player who plays, you know, Billy Joel and Elton John and plenty of songs you can sing along to, but instead of being on a guitar, it's on a piano. And you, there are certain songs I think that lend themselves more towards pianos than guitars, but it's very popular in the evening times. It gets really crowded in here. In addition, there's also trivia, as I mentioned earlier at the Schooner Bar. Trivia is a very popular activity because with the trivia games, it was very competitive. There's really not much prizes, more bragging rights, but if you'd like to go there, this is probably one of the best places to go do trivia. I just love that nautical theme. It's very classy looking. You're also gonna find Giovanni Sable on deck four near the Schooner Bar. Giovanni Sable is Royal Caribbean's Italian restaurant and they serve classic Italian fare from pastas to fish to chicken and steak and a lot of other foods all between plenty of wines, of course. It is a classic Royal Caribbean cruise experience. Of course, this is a specialty restaurant, which means there's a cover charge. It's not including your cruise fare, but like Chopped, you pay a cover charge and everything on the menu is included there. And you can order as much as you like. The nice thing about Giovanni's number one is Italian food. That's pretty much crowd pleasing. It's hard to find somebody who doesn't like Italian food. And there's a lot of good choices here. In fact, the steak, the filet mignon is like, I think better than the filet mignon over at Chops, believe it or not. But they make handmade pastas every day here at Giovanni's. It's a great choice if you're looking for a specialty restaurant and maybe you already did shops or you don't want to do steaks, this is an option for you as well. With Giovanni's table, you can either pre-book it before the cruise or use your dining package to dine here as well. We're gonna head out to the promenade deck on deck four. The promenade deck wraps around the outside of the ship. It's probably where you're gonna walk on the ship when you first board it, but it's a great spot for just enjoying the views. Unlike the pool deck, which you can see these things as well, it's quieter here, there's no music, there's also no bars here but it is probably one of the most classic cruising places you can go to. There's plenty of chairs, you get the sea breeze, views all around you, and you can walk around this. It's not the jogging deck, but it is a good spot for a casual stroll around the ship. And I like going here, you know, in the afternoons, in the evenings, you wanna get some fresh air, read your book, just enjoy the views, this is an option for you. There's also shuffleboard in which that's free to use if you know how to play shuffleboard, you can, borrow the equipment and give it a try. The rules are posted there for you in case you have no idea how to use it. Another classic cruise experience that I think a lot of people don't even know it exists anymore, but it is available. But the cool thing about the promenade deck is it does go around the entire ship. So you can take a nice little walk around. And one of my favorite little secrets about the Voyager class is the helicopter pad. Located all the way forward. It's actually, I said promenade deck's on deck four. It is on four, but part of it goes up to deck five. Don't worry, there's just stairs. It's pretty easy. And when you get to the helipad, this is a complimentary area. There's no cost to go here. Most people don't even know it exists, but you can go here anytime. And this is my absolute favorite place for sail away. The, the perspective that you get here is unmatched anywhere on the ship. So when your ship is ready to sail away and you want somewhere a little different or the best views, you can definitely go out to the helipad and check it out. Heck, when your ship is sailing in the middle of the ocean, go over there and try it out. We're gonna hop into one of the many elevators on Voyager of the Seas to go check out what's available. You know, a lot of this can be confusing as to where things are. Luckily, everything's pretty well labeled. The photo gallery is on deck three midship. So if you remember, we were on the promenade, we went down to deck four. Now we're down to deck three, and this is where you can go to get any of the photos. Remember, there are photo stations throughout your cruise that you can stop at and take professional photos. There's no cost to stop to take a photo, but if you actually wanna purchase the photo, well, this is where you can go to take care of it. There are available options for you over there. And there's a beautiful photo of Angie and her dad. There are also photo albums and frames you can get. This is also where you go to Studio B, which is one of the theaters on the Voyager of the Sea. Studio B is an ice skating rink. And of course, as you might imagine, there are shows here actually. We'll talk more about that in a second. First, there's actually an opportunity for you to go ice skating on your cruise ship. Yeah, so the during certain times of the cruise, 
there will be open skates in which you can go and try your talents, I guess, at ice skating. Don't worry, Royal Caribbean provides all the gear you need, including skates and helmets and whatnot. But it's a fun activity. There's no cost to do this. And it's a great little thing to try. For some people, they've never ice skated before. Others, it's been many years and a few of you are really good at it and can skate backwards. And I hate all of you because you're so much more talented at it. Make it look so easy and I can barely stand on the ice, but a fun thing to do. Whether you skate or not though, you wanna check out the ice skating show on Voyager because the ice skating show, even though it's like ice skating show, like what? Trust me, it's way better than it sounds. It's actually really cool. Royal Caribbean hires world-class ice skating athletes. And some of these were on national or even Olympic teams. And it's really cool to see. In addition to that, I don't know how we segue from ice skating to the quest. You're also gonna find other activities here like the quest. The quest, how do I describe the quest? It is an adult scavenger hunt. And as you're seeing here in this video, there's a lot that's happening. <laughs> and it's definitely meant for adults only. Don't bring your kids to it. You gotta see it to experience it, to understand it. But yeah, it is what it is. Next up is the Royal Theater. The Royal Theater is on both deck three and deck four. So it's multi-deck. And the shows and entertainment in the Royal Theater are complimentary, no additional cost for you to see them during your cruise. And you'll find a variety of different performances throughout your sailing. There'll be production shows with music and dancers. There'll be comedians. There'll be featured performers. It really depends on your cruise exactly what performances you have. Voyager of the Seas does not have a Broadway show like some of the other newer Royal Caribbean cruise ships, but it does have a variety of entertainment that you can try. And there'll be something in there, I think pretty much every night of your cruise to check out the Royal Caribbean app for more information on what can be scheduled there while you're on board. And also something that you might be interested in knowing is where the Loyalty Ambassador is. They're located on deck two forward. It's almost hidden here. The Loyalty Ambassador is somebody who can help you with any crown and anchor concerns you might have, questions about your status or how your benefits work. You can go there to check it out. Now, of course, we didn't talk about the staterooms and there are staterooms on deck two, three, and then deck six through 12. So they're all around the ship. And of course, when you get on board your cruise ship, you'll be assigned a room because you already booked it when you first booked your sailing, but it's pretty easy to find. Here we have a look at an ocean view cabin and being an ocean view cabin, it's a little bit different than other cabins, obviously, but the general layout is kind of the same among standard rooms, right? You're gonna have, in this case, a floor ceiling window, but you've got a bed, you've got a sitting area, there's a couch, there's a private bathroom. And the neat thing about different types of cabins is you get different kinds of layouts and different amenities. Whether or not it's worth it for you to get, you know, an inside room or move up to a balcony or even a suite, really it depends on your budget and what your needs are. There's pros and cons to everything. You can have a great cruise in an inside cabin and you can have a fantastic cruise in a suite. The bottom line is don't look at it as like, oh gosh, if we stay in an inside room or an ocean view, man, we're really gonna suffer without that balcony or suite experience. Trust me, you can have a great experience from either one. The good news is you'll always have a private bathroom and TV and your own beds. You're not sharing anything with anybody. And quite frankly, the amenities are good enough. Remember, when you're on a cruise ship, you're kind of spending a lot of time out and about. There's also a fair amount of storage space, not a ton. I think some newer ships have more storage space than you'll find on Voyager of the Seas, but I think for certainly two people, there's more than enough. The longer you're sailing, the more that may be an issue for you, but you know, you're gonna have to be a little creative sometimes when unpacking and putting your things away. So there you have it, a look at Royal Caribbean's Voyager of the Seas. You know, Voyager of the Seas is in this day and age, a little lost in the shuffle of big cruise ships that are out there. It's a great ship. Plenty to do. And I think you're going to find some of the pricing really aggressive with Voyager of the Seas. But most importantly, it's a fun ship to go on. There's certainly enough to keep you going. And the itineraries you're going to go on, you know, certainly I think are some really cool places to visit. Ultimately, with Voyager of the Seas, you're going to find a good variety of dining choices, things to do on board, events held on board, and of course, the places you'll be going. Let me know in the comments below what do you think of Voyager of the Seas? What really stands out to you about this ship? And what are your favorite features? While you're down below our video, hit the like button, subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications. That way, YouTube wants to know we have a brand new video to share. This has been Matt from RoyalCaribbeanBlog.com and we'll talk again real soon.